In the 1700s, in what was becoming the United States, universalism referred to universal salvation, the idea that God's very nature was love and as such would not allow anyone to go to eternal hell. For the people who believed this, there were some beliefs that kind of naturally followed that, namely, like, if God loves everyone, then we should probably figure out how to do that. And if God loves everyone in the entire world, then probably he put some wisdom and insights into other cultures and other religions. In 1777, Universalist George Beneville wrote this. As no church is pure in all things, so none can be found that does not contain some truth. Glorious truths are found in every church and religion under the sun, and this glorious chain of truths we believe will someday unite all of them into one form of love. De Beneville would go on with others to form universalism into an organized denomination. Uh, to do that, they needed to have some kind of faith statement to differentiate themselves from other Christians, and so they came up with what is called the Winchester Profession. Pause to read. It was pretty simple, but nonetheless, it was so important to them to establish that freedom of belief was going to be part of this denomination that they included what has come to be called the Liberty Clause. Other than a short period at the end of the 1800s, the Universalists would always have some form of a Liberty Clause, um, expanding it to mean not only congregations, but also that individuals had a right to developing and, and freedom of belief. Um, and it would be in all of their documents. And thus, in the 1700s Universalism, the seeds for our evolution to become the free uh, pluralist faith that Unitarian Universalism is today were planted. Like and follow for part three.